We are working today in chapter number five, which is equilibrium of rigid bodies. Mm -hmm. This is the first example. And what we like to do is uh, find the support reaction. So we have here a beam from A to, this is the, this point here where this load is applied. And we have a pin at A, and we have a weightless link CD that is supported by a pin also at D. And we want to find the reactions at A, which is a pin, and at C. Then, the first thing that we always wanted to do in a rigid body equilibrium problem is to do the free body diagram. So let's draw the free body diagram. I will draw the free body diagram of this beam right here. So I do the active forces. The active forces that I have is a 4 kilonewtons force applied to this point, and then I do the reactive forces. At A, I have a pin, therefore I have two reactions, AX and AY. I don't know if these reactions are going to be positive or negative because a pin can act in either direction. And, of course, I'm using X and Y as my coordinate system, so it's X over here and Y over here, right? And then I have the reaction at C. Since this is a weightless link, it produces only a reaction along this member. So I will have a reaction in this direction. So we can imagine that this is pushing down, therefore this weightless link is going to be in compression. So it's sustaining the weight and the, this force actually of this beam. And I will call it reaction CD. Very important that we have no information about the weight of the link of the beam. Obviously, the beam has a weight, but is probably much smaller, negligible respect to this force that it has applied. That's why, if we don't have any information, we do not put the weight because it's negligible respect to the forces that are actually applied to the beam. So now that we have our free body diagram, let me put this name of free body diagram a little bit to the right so it doesn't get confused with my axis. Now I can apply the equations of equilibrium. Since we are working in 2D and a rigid body, I have three equations of equilibrium which are adding forces in X, adding forces in Y, and taking moment respect to one point. We have to have the, the angle of this force, since we have here that this is 1.5 meters and this is 1.5, therefore this angle is 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. Now that we have set up all the magnitudes and all the equations, so this is 1.5, and this is 1.5, I can apply my equations of equilibrium. So my equations of equilibrium are in forces in X and Y and moment. Which one I apply first? If I apply moment respect to point A, I'm canceling out two uh, unknowns because those two will not produce moment respect to that point A. And I will be able to find this Force. Therefore, I will, my first equation of equilibrium that I will apply will be moment respect to A, a and that will be equals to zero. Therefore, I have 1.5 is the distance for this force, and as you know, the only component that produces a moment is the one that is perpendicular. Then I have the one that is along the beam, which is parallel to the distance, that does not produce any moment. Therefore, the one that produces moment is RC sine of 
45, which is square root of 2 over 2. What is this moment? Is it positive or is it negative? I use the right hand rule. I put my hand where A is located, right here, my palm along the distance, and I curl my fingers towards the force. That means that is counterclockwise. And I remember if I have x and y, then my c goes in this direction, therefore counterclockwise is positive. So it's a positive moment, and then I have 3 times 4 at k kilonewtons, and I do the same. I put my hands towards the distance, curls my fingers towards the force, and I see that it's a clockwise. Since it's a clockwise moment, it's negative. And that will be equals to 3 times 4 kilonewtons equals to 0. Okay, so from here I can solve 4 R C D, and I have the value right here, which is 11.31 kilonewtons. And it gives me a positive value. Therefore, my assumption that this weightless link was in compression, therefore, by action and reaction, I put a positive reaction, give me, it, it was correct. Now that we have, this is our first equation, now that we have our first equation, let's do the second equation, which is adding forces in x, that will be equals to zero, therefore I have Ax plus Rc, and now also, here I was, I applied sine of, sine of 45, right, to, to get my y component, now I apply cosine of 45, which is also square root of 2 over 2, and I don't have any other forces, therefore this is equals to 0. And so, for Ax, and I will get that it is minus 8 kilonewtons. What does it mean that it's a negative value of Ax? It means that it doesn't go in this direction, but it goes in the opposite direction. But as I always say, we know what a negative number means, so if we can leave just the negative number, and we know that it goes to the other direction. It has the opposite sense. And my third equation will be adding forces in y, and in y I have a y plus the vertical component, which is sine of 45, which is also square root of 2 over 2, minus 4 kilonewtons. That gives me 0, and then I solve for a y, and that gives me a value of negative 4 kilonewtons. Again, the negative means that it goes in the opposite direction. So if I have to redraw my free body diagram, I could redraw it with the values, and these two arrows will go to the opposite sense. So that will go down, and it will the value will be 4 kilonewtons, and that will be to the right. So if we want to make sure we understand, this force goes in this direction, and this goes, goes in this direction. And this is the solution of this problem.